Good morning, everybody. Enter the stars. Welcome to the show. We're starting a little early this morning because there's some things we need to talk about first before we get into some of these montages that we uploaded over the weekend. Uh, the channel's still here, obviously, and we're still here only because of a very concerted effort to find a way around the YouTube rules. And about a year ago, we started coding the way that we say things. And I tried to share that knowledge with my peers here on YouTube. I put the word out to any large channels that needed advice on keeping your channel, how to do it, how to stay in good standing with YouTube. One of those things that we don't do on this channel is use curse words or we don't make accusations without proof. And when we can, we use their own entertainment, their own quotes, things that they've said in their programming to deliver the message of truth. And then when you do it that way, what can YouTube say? These are their own images, things that are on their very plat platform. We don't bully. We don't rant. We've learned that there's a way to say things. And over the course of the last eight years, that's how, about how long it took us, we learned exactly what triggers YouTube's algorithms. So we code those words so that when the videos publish, our account stays in good standing. And that's the trick to staying on YouTube. Now, of course, this probably isn't bulletproof, but it seems to have worked. And because of all that effort that we've put into being careful, the channel never even makes it to a red flag review by YouTube. And then, through real research, digging, and lots of preparation, we follow the leads and we find some pretty amazing connections that help people to wake up to all the lies and how the elite are trying to steer humanity through entertainment. So, for that reason, when you come to this channel, you will notice that it is in good standing with YouTube. You will notice that it often shows up in the recommended videos. That's because of all the work that we've done to make that so. That wasn't always the case. And that's why it took so long for this channel to grow. We've been on here since 2012, you guys. All of my peers are half a million subscribers or more. Every single one of them. And people that came after this channel are far, far past our subscriber subscribership here. So now we finally figured out a way to do it. And it's been effective in getting the word out to as many people as possible. That's what this is all about. Spreading the word of truth. And now our channel is finally starting to grow after all these years. And many of you have been very patient. And so the strategy is working. So why am I bringing all, why am I bringing this up? Because it makes me sad when I hear ch channels with five times the subscribers as me trying to discredit us just because we have a join button on our channel, or just because there are ads running on the, on the videos, just because their channel happens to be in trouble right now. You guys, we've lost channels too. There was an entire year where I didn't have anything to eat. And everyone that's been here knows that this has been a very long road since 2012. We sat at like 20,000 subscribers forever, putting up work every single day. Now, I've been on camera a few times, just a few years ago even, while I was out of the country. I don't do a lot of live documentary videos and live commentary videos because... I want you guys focused on the information I'm presenting. And that's why we do so much graphic information. I show you things. That's where I want your focus. I don't want you looking at my face. Because it doesn't matter. My ego's not big enough to where you need to be sitting looking at me talking. 
I don't love myself that much. And yes, I carefully prepare and put a lot of work into this research. And here's what I realized. I used to just go off the gun, you know, and just try to talk off the cuff. And I realized with this kind of information, this is fallen angel intelligence, you guys. This is super intelligence. This isn't the kind of stuff you can just throw together or that you're going to have completely memorized when you're grabbing for these thoughts and concepts that intertwine with one another. You really have to prepare for this. And when I didn't prepare in the past, I found that I repeated myself a lot or I would talk in circles or I would get hung up on certain points that I didn't need to get hung up on. Or I'd start bringing up the same topics that I was familiar with over and over and over again with nothing new to say. Or I would accidentally say a word that would trigger the algos and flag my video, which would then put my channel in jeopardy. And it's not just my channel, it's our channel. It's all of you that come here who want to see this stuff. And I take that very seriously. So, I'd rather prepare bring you new information every day and then move on to other concepts and root out the things that need to be exposed and that's how we do it on this channel so I'm not gonna apologize for my channel finally being in good standing with YouTube and somewhat safe from what's coming now nobody is safe of course right but I do believe in spiritual rules. And there are certain things YouTube can do to us. And there are certain things they can't based on God's rules. Just like Job had this dialogue going on between Satan and God in heaven about Job's life. They can't just wipe out every voice of dissent. It doesn't work that way. But you got to go by rules. So we found a way to fit inside the rules and still bring you the truth. And because of that, all of my recent videos are YouTube compatible. It means that what we're doing is working. And we keep our voice to speak out. So we keep on going. So why are we focused on Trump right now? It's because he's the one in power. He's the one making choices and decisions. The spotlight is on him, okay? And anyone who the spotlight is on, who has any kind of power, that's who we focus on on this channel. They're steering the country and the world down a particular path. This is part of their design. And he is the one that has everyone tricked, thinking that we're a nationalist country, when in actuality we're a globalist country still. More now than ever. Full steam ahead, globalism. The technocracy is stronger than it ever has been before under Trump. 5G whiz and beyond, very necessary to the technocracy. Uh, we've talked about that. Why that's necessary. Live cameras everywhere tied into the 5G whiz. We've showed you how the military is talking about that as well. How they're going to need that to upload that to, to Skynet. We see corporate corruption at an all-time high, right? I mean, look what's happening right now under CV-19. Most of the small businesses have been decimated. They're not, they just don't exist anymore. And if they do exist, they're, they're running on fumes. Very little gas left in the tank. That's the middle class. Destroyed. Now you can blame the left all you want. But it's both sides working together. And when or if Biden ever gets power. He will fall under the exact same scrutiny that Trump did. As Obama did before him. And as Bush did before him on this channel. We've already started talking about the Lotus, Kamala Harris. We've already started talking about her. 
this channel exists outside the right left paradigm and i shouldn't have to keep saying that over and over again but it amazes me how many people come and they watch five minutes of a video and decide that i'm a trump hater they don't they don't see that i've said over and over again this channel's outside of the right left paradigm we don't choose right or left we choose jesus and we understand that every world leader is under Satan's control. It just is. The Bible says it is. That's why Satan was able to offer Jesus all of the kingdoms of the world. Because he was in control of them. We don't fall for hope and change on this channel. No matter whose mouth it's coming out of. Obama or Trump, it doesn't matter. We don't fall for false prophets. Or leaders who use Jesus' name in vain to trick you into voting for them. It's so weird. We just talked about, I was telling you guys, I go, why isn't it that that these presidents never use Jesus' name? They all, they talk about God a lot, but they never talk about Jesus. Lo and behold, a couple of you came forward and was like, hey, in a couple of Trump's last speeches, he invoked Jesus' name. Isn't that weird? Now, I'm not going to claim that Trump is sitting here watching this channel. I don't think that's what's happening here. I just think that we're ahead of the curve because we listen to the Holy Spirit. So God puts us in a position and a place to speak about certain topics. And this is why you shouldn't get upset if I don't cover something that you want me to cover. It's not because I don't want to cover it. It's because maybe it's just not ready to be covered yet. And that's why I listen to God and what He wants me to do. So now all of a sudden... Trump and Pence are talking about Jesus almost in every single speech. That's weird. Now, something else I want to talk to you about. Is this channel the only truth channel you need? Absolutely not. I would never claim that. We're, you guys, we're only one dimension of the whole picture. One model. Do you need sometimes to see a person... And their face on screen ranting to get other aspects of the truth. For some of you, yes, you need somebody to get angry for you. I'm not saying that's bad. That's just not the way we do it. And why people feel like they need to lash out and try to discredit channels, I don't get that. I mean, unless it's someone who doesn't believe in God or something. Do you need to watch channels that go deeper into the word much more than we do here or solely focus on prayer and Bible study? Absolutely. I encourage you to do that. If you feel this is all too much. In fact, I tell you guys, look, if you've already figured out what this is that we're showing you, which is pre-programming and sorcery, you might graduate to a new level. You might then want to focus on the spiritual things. And go, you know what, I already know media entertainment is brainwashing. I already know that I can't trust any of these world leaders or politicians, no matter if they're on the right or the left. If you already know that, you don't really need to spend a lot of time here. This channel is mostly for people who are just waking up. Who think that the world is one way. But then when you see how... There's this concerted effort by Hollywood and all entertainment. Everything that comes into your device is programming. And until you understand that, and until you understand the agendas that are interwoven into the programming, you'll never wake up because you'll keep believing one side or the other. So, all true Christian channels are part of the body of Christ. None of us have all the answers. And the gift that God gave me is what I'm doing exactly right now. And when that changes, he'll let me know. Now, I need to make all these things clear because we're entering a very difficult time in the truth community. As YouTube begins to come after certain channels, you know, there's there's anger about that. And I get it. I was mad for a very long time when my channel was so small. And I, we had all this great information that I wanted to to reach lots and lots more people and it's very frustrating and so I understand that but the last thing we need to be doing is turning on each other okay or we've all been in the same boat at one time being here on YouTube and 
That brings us to the KEW movement. Named after KEW Forest, which is where Trump went to elementary school. And how they infiltrated the truth community. They consolidated it into a very large faction. And then they sought to bring it down, which is what they're doing now. We warned you about this. Exactly what I told you was going to happen. Infiltrated. A very simple label was applied. A, a mantra. A definition. An idea. A description. That could easily be identified. And then what happened was YouTube rewarded those channels. And they got very quick sub subscriber growth. A lot of those channels hit 100,000 subscribers in like six months. What did that do? That made other channels who maybe were outside of that paradigm, it made them want to adopt those beliefs, right? Because they saw that this was popular on YouTube in the truth community. So then they adopted all those models for their channels. And then once it got big enough, they went through, YouTube went through and rooted them all out. And all the believers with them, all the subscribers with them. See how effective that was? And we've seen this before. The C to the I to the A. This is just what they do. This is what they've always done. Infiltrate, co-opt, get a huge gathering, following, and then take it down. This is their playbook. And so what they've done is now all these people, everyone in the truth community are going to be labeled with the KEW label. They created a paradigm. It's kind of like the word uh, C-O-N-S-P-I-R-A-C-Y. Theorist. It's kind of like that. How that developed from a paradigm that they created and they can apply that label and immediately discredit a group of people now we have a new one KEW so why why do we decode entertainment why do we spend so much time on this and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this because this is another question that a lot of new subscribers have it's because entertainment is the main tool that the enemy uses to mind control you. It's pretty simple. Because everybody watches it. Everybody watches news or entertainment or commercials, advertising, um, ga video games. That's another huge mind control mechanism. Everybody watches it. So what's happened is there that whole genre of entertainment across all genres has been co-opted and controlled to deliver a message of control subliminally and so what we show you on this channel is what you're really watching not what you think you're watching what you're really watching and people who come and criticize the, this process on this channel and what we do here it's it's tantamount to like criticizing somebody for watching politics or criticizing somebody for going to a movie or having a favorite actor or having a favorite movie that they like to watch or using your cell phone so the premise is laughable when you really think about it wouldn't you want to really know what you're watching and how you're being programmed I know I do and that's why God led us to do this so you can put labels on you can try to say this is looking into the occult but really I'm just watching a movie and telling you exactly what it means you're watching the very same movie. So so you watching the movie, the, oh, I guess you're an occultist too then. So, if you're new to this channel, that's what's going on. Now let's get into one of our latest findings that I promised that I would break down for you a little bit further. We're going to spend part of the week kind of reviewing some of these montages that I put up over the weekend. And then we've also got some, some new content. But based on all of the programming that we've uncovered, 
it appears to me that Trump has some sort of device. And it, the device that he has at least fakes time travel. Now, when I say the word time travel, a lot of people get really upset about that. Especially people that believe in God or Christ. Well, and there were a lot of people that left the channel when we started talking about time travel. I was shocked. Long time people that have come to the channel. And I explained to them, don't you understand that demons were once angels who were timeless beings? Who were jumping in and out of the timeline as angels to help God's people? We have many examples of these time travelers in the Bible that interceded when Lot was in Gomorrah and he had to escape. Many, many times angels showed up. Those are time travelers. It's the semantics that people get hung up on and upset about. We can call it something different if it makes you feel better. But basically, there are people, or not people, but angels that are in God's timeline, which is the infinite. They live forever. And they're jumping. They, they look exactly the same, but they're jumping in and out of the timeline to help people. Now, these angels have been talked about at length in the Bible. People talk about seeing angels who help them not die in car accidents and things like that, or intervene to find a child, or whatever the case may be. Those are like time travelers. They come from the infinite into the finite universe, and they go back to the finite, the infinite universe, right? And then they might top, pop back in somewhere else. We have no idea what infinite time means. All we know is our uh, finite universe. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. And the fact that demons were once angels. So you think they don't have any knowledge of events in the infinite? Um, someone else made a really great comment about the book of Revelation and how exact. It already tells us the future events. That's like time travel. So obviously the evil ones know the plan. And they know the future. How did they know that future? And I thought that was a really great point that someone brought up in the comments. How do they know what's going to happen in Revelation? There's also the aspect of this about God's prophets. And when they see God's plan, they're given a vision, right? They're, they're literally seeing into the future. That's like time travel. God's showing them a vision of the future. So, don't get hung up on the semantics. Now, what do I think is happening with Trump and this device and all of this? Well, here's what I think is going on. I think he has some kind of device. It's probably high ancient technology. Probably got it from his uncle who got it from Tesla. These devices are very powerful. They have lots of power. They could take down buildings. And through this kind of sacrifice, I think what's happening is it's opening portals. Now, this could tie into CERN as well. There is a CERN facility in Canada called Triumph. And we're going to talk about Triumph and what that means. The Arcs of Triumph. They're basically all over the world. Let me show you a couple of those here. They're all over the world. And here, many of them. Many of them are older some ancient we all know the very famous ark of triumph the arch of palmyra which is an ark of triumph and these are known in the ancient world as portals to the cities but i think there's a double meaning to all this here's the champ the ark of triumph in paris the very famous one and there's something to this and it's weird how Trump's name appears in the word triumph. And that so basically his name means a portal. And I think these portals open and this somehow links into CERN. Why do I say it links into CERN? You're gonna see in this decode here, we're gonna break down in this Stargate series. And I'm gonna give you a little backdrop to that so you can understand it. But in the Stargate series, they show these arches next to rings. These portals, and they're portals to travel through time and space. Time travel. 
portals. And so there's something going on here. The ring is like CERN, right? What are they doing? Maybe they're opening the bottomless pit. We don't know. But there's something happening here. There's way too much pre-programming going on to not understand what this is all about. Now, Trump made a visit to the Arc the Triumph in Paris for the 100, 200 year, oh uh, no, 100 year anniversary of WW1. Can't say that word. See how careful we are? This is why our channel is doing okay right now. A lot of people just want to speak plainly. Hey, that's for your prerogative, but understand when you do that, it will put you on the, on the chopping block. Okay? Now, here's Trump's appearance. And obviously this doesn't happen very often because this was the 100 year. They might have did one at 75 years. I don't know. But there's Trump. He arrived in The Beast, right? Uh, you know, if you're a real Christian, you would probably rename that into something else. I wouldn't keep calling it The Beast. I would have sold all my gold and just gave it to the homeless. Or opened up a soup kitchen with it at the bottom of Trump Tower. I don't know. That's what real Christians do. But here he is at the Ark. It's just weird. You got Triumph, Trump standing in front of Triumph. I mean, do we not see that? What's happening here? This is just weird. So that was on, of course, November 11th, which in the Roman calendar, remember, Roman Apollo would be Nov means nine. So you have a 9 and you have an 11. This was in 2018. Now, that brings us to the TV series Stargate. I got some images pulled up here. And this television show went from the late 1990s through the 2010s. Let's see if we can get this to work. All right. And I picked this back up because I remembered that there was a time travel component to the series. And lo and behold, the rest just kind of unfolded as you're going to see it right now. Now, I want to be clear. The image that you're looking at right now, that has Trump's name, was revealed in a readout. In an episode long before Trump would ever become president. And the readout was them jumping through time. And all I did was take the letters. This is called a gate address. They're called chevrons. And they surround the ring. The CERN-like ring. And they open these portals. And basically, I took the individual components of this, as you can see here, and I was able to spell Trump's name. That's not an accident, you guys. Every component is accounted for. Even these two little triangles here. See these two little triangles? Let's make this bigger. Because I was like, where do those belong to? Then I figured it out. Those are the buildings. What buildings, Casey? Well, there is a Superman building, the IBM building, in New York. It forms a pair with Trump's other buildings. Or his Trump Tower. I'll show you that here. This is crazy. Here is the IBM building. It is the Superman logo. And for those of you, we'll, we'll cover that in another full fuller show on later in the week. But we did a montage over the weekend. So if you want to watch that, figure out what we're talking about here. This is Trump Tower here. Let's make this bigger. And there's Trump Tower here. And right next to it is a pair. It is a copycat building. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different, but it looks a lot like it. Same general shape. A wedge shape, they call it. This is the IBM building. I put the Superman logo on top of it because that's the exact shape of the top of the building. And 
Both these buildings opened in 1983. A pair. 83 plus 83 is 166. Trump's penthouse is on the 66th floor of his building. These are connected by a glass atrium. It's all right there for those who have eyes to see, who want to understand this. And so there's a lot more to it, and I'll let you watch watch the uh, decode on that. It's like a seven-minute decode that I did on this. But basically, there's something to this time travel thing. Now, the episode that I pulled this from is all about sterilization of the entire world. And that's where this gets a little bit creepy, right? A lot of creepy. Because why are they... I mean, what's that about, right? What does time travel have to do with sterilization? Well, there's also a VACCINE component to it. So you got these three things that are happening right now. We've got Biff the Time Traveler, Trump. We've got a worldwide VC campaign we're about to embark on. Okay. Now, what you're going to notice here is this looks like two arrows. The same two arrows I showed you in the gate address for Stargate. What can that mean? It's weird. I go to sleep at night and I wake up in the morning and a lot of these answers are plugged into my head. That's the Holy Spirit. But as I'm decoding it, sometimes I miss it. When I wake up in the morning, God told me these were fast forward symbols. Two arrows moving in the same direction is fast forward. Time travel. Jumping. So this is built right into the landscape. The future of what was to come. And 33 years after these buildings opened, Trump became president. It's like they knew. He was going to become president. So, let's break down the plot in this series that we're going to take a look at today. We can close this now. Stargate. Make this bigger. Now, this is all about an ancient Egyptian ring. Giant ring which is a stargate. It was found in Egypt uh, near Ra's tomb, right? Ra's the sun god. And later they find a way to manipulate this thing and make it work with power, but it needs like a lot of power. And what they figure out that they can do is jump through time, not time, but space. First they jump through space. They figure that out. And this event horizon opens. It looks like a puddle of water splashing. And they can walk right through into these other universes. So you can call Ra the original Lord of the Ring. Right? He was the first Lord of the Ring. So then this uh, secret government, U.S. government program, figures out a way to type in the gate addresses, which we just talked about a little bit ago, and they can go to these other worlds. So they did an entire series on this where these this team of military people walk through this gate and they can go to all these different worlds, right? And they discover all these different worlds and they talk about the moral dilemmas surrounding this and, you know, should they be changing these people's experience and their development? And they agree that they should have as minimal of impact as possible. But they do intervene. Now, in the beginning of the series, they can only really travel within their own timeline. But eventually, they figure out a way to travel backwards and forwards in time. The way that they do this is through the sun's solar activity, or the C-O-R-O-N-A. Are you starting to see how all of this centers around sun worship? Ra, the sun god, the C-R-O-N-A, which opens up the time component to the gate system. And this brings us to a very small set of episodes that I was able to find in the series that is all about time travel. There's about five or six episodes talking about time travel. I put them all together. I decoded them. And I found alarming 
synchronicities that point to exactly right now. Now, what ends up happening and what you're going to see next is that these gate travelers use time travel to try to undo a, a meeting that they had with these aliens. They, and it was like an unholy alliance that they formed with this advanced civilization. And they later realize that this advanced civilization was trying to depopulate the earth through sterilization. And they deploy the steriliz sterilization by way of a VC. A V-A-C-Z-I-N-E. And so the Stargate people send this note back in time to try to warn them to never go to the planet. So as we watch this decode, you can clearly see how all of this is happening right now. We've got Biff, we've got Trump time travel, we got a worldwide VC and a spamdemic, we have promises of galactic peace, and everything else you're about to see right now. Let's take a look. Now, this is a book that I found from the, you can read the title there. Let's fix the resolution. I don't know what's going on with this. And they already know that Trump is associated with triumph. That's why they made a book on it. Titus, Trump, and the triumph. And they show this triumphal arch here. And they got the presidential seal on it. They already know. So it's not me just saying this, that Trump is triumph. They're telling you, okay? And like everything else on this channel, it's what they're saying. I need more time. Once I've correctly deciphered the symbols on the altar, I will be able to master the time device. Why? So you can be king of Groundhog Day? Now, the Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. And I think about that all the time. What does that really mean? Well, maybe it, it is that when we are under the sun, it's stuck in down here in the matrix, that Satan rules, which is what the Bible tells us. And this is why Satan worships the sun, because what does the sun do? It keeps time. And so... If there's nothing new under the sun, what is that really saying? It's kind of like Groundhog Day. Things are repeating. Things are in cycles. Things that we don't even understand on a spiritual level. And I think we're somehow tapping into that by showing you things that haven't happened. Well, not haven't happened yet, but showing you how they are depicting things that haven't happened yet. And then it's coming to fruition. This, well, this happens over and over and over again on this channel. There's something to it. So I'm starting to wonder what's really going on this watch. So season four, episode six, Trump was born in 46. So when I did this decode over the weekend, I didn't know what these triangles were. But then you listen to God, he shows you. So then God goes, look at Trump Tower again. And I looked next to Trump Tower and there was a building that looked just like another diamond. A pair of diamonds or a pair of Superman symbols. And that's exactly what this is. It's fast forwarding through time. Weird, right? 
Chevron 6 Lock. So what you're going to see next is in both of these tri time travel episodes, there's an arc of triumph or arc of Trump behind the Stargate, behind the CERN-like Stargate. Daniel? Now, it's important to note the dates of these episodes, okay? The previous one you saw was the year 2000, 19 years ago, right? CV19. And this one was in 1999, which of course is 66, but the episode is called 1969. That's the year of the moon landing. It's important to note this because here we are full circle again from the moon landing. What is Trump talking about? The Apollo missions, Artemis, the sister of Apollo. Okay, it's happening again. Now here's where things get crazy because these arcs of triumph are aligned to 116 degrees. There are two of them in Paris. There's one, the Ark of Triumph we just saw that Trump visited. There's another one called the Ark of the Triumph of the Par of the Carousel. And they are aligned to one another in a straight line, as you're going to see in a minute, and to 116 degrees. Now, what is 116? It's 58 and 58. A pair of 58s. Trump Tower, 58 stories tall, the 1958 Western with a guy named Trump who built the wall, the 1958 in Quantum Leap where Trump appeared as a 12-year-old boy, and then it goes on and on and on. Mar-a-Lago has 58 rooms. He's the fifth, This is the 58th election. Need I say more? Let's watch. There's also an Arcule de Triumph in Romania. It's uh, aligned to 160 degrees. But notice that 1-6 number again. There's something to that. Oh, duh. 8 and 8 is 16. That's 88. supposed to be doing that now we're going to examine the CRONA component as you can see here on your screen 19 years before CV19 watch it's a coronal mass emission like a giant solar flare but it's safe right I distinctly remember sitting here listening to Carter prattle on about solar activity and a corona something right I mean is that weird or what now this is Colonel O'Neill, and he his whole like personality is he's kind of like he's like really savvy, but he's not all that book smart. But he always says profound things that make sense. So you just heard him, right? He can't remember the rest of it, but he specifically says the word of exactly what we're going through right now. And this is they need this solar flare to go through the wormhole. Now I'm not saying that um you know, the CV-19 is allowing us to travel through time. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, 
They're using this spiritually and symbolically. Mass human sacrifice to open up the bottomless pit, which is their form, their evil form of time travel. Do you think that Satan doesn't have some kind of prophetic equivalent to what God does with his prophets? Of course he does. He shows them a version of the future and the past, just like God shows his prophets. Because Satan wants to be like the Most High, right? He wants to elevate himself above the Most High and be just like him. So let's keep listening because this CRONA component is very intriguing. Coronal mass emissions, I was just about to bring it up. The P4X639 was once a colony of the ancients. They thrived there for thousands of years until they were struck with some sort of unspecified cataclysm, perhaps a disease, but perhaps a disease, but perhaps a disease, but perhaps a disease. Two weeks ago, SG-15 took these images of solar activity on P4X639. Now this is weird because what does that look like? Watch. Nineteen years before CV nineteen, this episode came out. Conqueror of time. Well, in this context, I'd say more like master of the uncertain past. You're a skilled linguist, Doctor Jackson. Unconquered son, conqueror of time. Now you're going to continue to see these breathe, breathe. They're going to keep talking about breathing. Well, what is? What are we going through right now? I can't breathe. Right. So here's one of the time trial episodes is that guy is like fidgeting with the gate and he creates a time loop so that he could try to cure his wife's disease, right? Again, it's all about disease. Notice that guy was all diseased. See how all these themes fit into exactly what we're going through right now? We're in a time loop of some type or the devil's time loop where he's planning on plotting out the future of the world through entertainment, through film entertainment. And so um, that that scientist you saw was in this time loop to try to cure a sick wife and the SG-1 team has to stop him because they're also stuck in the time loop. But only O'Neill and Tilk know that they're stuck in the time loop. So they go through this time loop for like three months trying to figure out, I mean, they keep repeating to this, the same 48 hours over and over again like Groundhog Day to try to figure out how to get out of the time loop. Keep watching. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. At some point, a beam shot out from the ruins around the altar and hit the Stargate. Then I was back in the commissary eating my Fruit Loops. You were sent back in time. For what, six hours? Well, it wouldn't be the first time we've seen something like this. I mean, the Stargate did send us back to 1969. To 1969? To 1969? So that was one episode. Then I decided to go back to that 1969 episode to show you what happened in that episode. So this is this montage here includes five or six different episodes from Stargate. It's not like I just cherry-picked these out of, like, one episode here. Let's keep watching. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that we've traveled back in time, roughly about 30 years. So when we locate the Stargate, how then do we get back to the future? Back to the future. Back to the future. Now, there were many more Back to the Future references in the episodes that I'm covering right now. But I don't, I don't list them all because it's redundant. But basically, they want you to know that this is about Biff and Back to the Future. Okay? Triumph. Trump. Sure. Now, it's so funny how some people are so quick to just mock, right? So, doing a two-second Google search and understanding that Trump lives on the 66th floor on a penthouse of a 58-story building, the first thing they do is go, you're stupid. You, you really think, you know, like, okay, so what is this really all about? Well, the Trump Tower 
has 10 stories missing. Now you got to ask him why he did that. It's really weird. Why would you put your penthouse on the 66th floor? That's weird to me. Well, now we know. I just showed you. 58 and 58 is 166. Now, what happens in this 1969 episode is they accidentally get shot into 1969 because of the solar flare. And they have to find a way out of it. And just before they leave, their general gives them a note. And basically, he already knew this was going to happen. Why? Because when they went back to 1969, they met the general, the younger version of him. And he remembered the meaning so it's like this weird time loop but look at this the 66 repeats of course route 66 and a lot of people drive on that but there's a deeper meaning to it obviously as you can see on your screen well i speak 23 different languages pick one well i speak 23 different just so happens trump was 23 years old in 1969 and he talks about 23 languages that's not an accident for languages well, I speak 23 different languages. 23 and 23 is 46. That's the chromosomes. It's also the year Trump was born. Excuse me. Who is this? Cassandra. Cassie's 13 years old. Not anymore, Jack. You entered the Stargate a few seconds too soon. I mean, this is just weird, right? Cassie, enter the Stargate. This is bizarre. All right. I have no idea what all this means, but it's there. And it's obvious to people that have followed this channel and can see the patterns, see how this programming is occurring and happening. So um, she's 13 years old. Obviously, there's a lot of 13s related to Trump. The 58 encodes the 13. 5 plus 8 is 13. He signed the National Emergency on 313, which is a mirror of the number 13. It was Friday the 13th, which put us all in the situation we're in right now. So the flare threw you far into the future. Uh, in any case, facing certain destruction, they built the time machine. They were going to go back and change their history to avoid their fate. Right, but it didn't work. If we don't find a way out of this soon, I'm going to lose it. It means go crazy. Whack out! So, we talked a lot about a smiley face eclipse. Remember how much heat we got? Oh, all eclipses look like something. No, they don't. This one in particular, the December 26th eclipse, was the first day that they isolated and named the new CV. They called it CV-19. And it was almost like these sun worshippers, this is when they decided to kick off their little thing that they're doing right now across the world. And it all started with an eclipse that looks like a smiley face. Now this is the eclipse, and what better day to choose than the day after, or the very close to the birthday of Apollo, the sun god, as well as Sol Invictus, as well as Dionysus, they were all born on December 25th, so that's the day they picked. Time travel? That's what she said. She... Now, for those of you that have already seen some of the montages, this is the new material. And I put it all together because I had done this in three different parts or two different parts. This is the new material. Okay, right here in the middle. This is where we're starting here. So many of you have not seen this part yet. Somehow found a way to travel back in time. How did she do this? Question is, where's the time machine now? Uh, the puddle jumper they escaped, it must have been some sort of a time machine. It had to have an additional component built into it. Flex capacitor. You're awake. His name was Jonas. John. So, 
This story, again, this is the Stargate universe. This is from the Atlantis, Stargate Atlantis. There were a couple spin-offs. Okay, so the characters are different, but it's the same concept. Traveling through time, through uh, through portals, through the machine, through the Stargate, right? Well, in this particular storyline, they explain where the time machine came from, or a particular time machine, and it came from a guy named Janus. He's the one that invented it. Okay, this is a different time travel mechanism compared to using the solar flares and the Stargate. This one exists in a smaller ship. And so we've been talking all about Janus, the two-faced god. Gemini, Trump's Gemini. Janus is the god of beginnings and endings. Gates, portals, right? Now, in this episode, she sees a mirror version of herself who's much older. And the older version of herself is explaining to the crew how she saved Atlantis by sacrificing herself. Okay, watch. Janus, Janus. He healed my wounds. He explained to me what had happened. So there's Janus, right? And he, of course, he's got the copper colored chest thing on. They know there's something about the copper. 5G whiz. He was the one who built it. He explained to me that the ship we had escaped in was a time machine. It is because of my experiments that we now have the opportunity to think. I am hereby ordering the destruction of this time travel device and all the materials connected with its design. We call you the ancients. The gate builders. Of course, Janus refused to concede defeat. <laughs> he came up with an alternate plan behind the council's back. I have to find a way to extend the supply of power. What Simon told us afterwards. A breathe. A breathe. There's that breathe thing again. Weird. A breathe. Maybe... There, people are on to something with this 5G whiz and the ability to breathe, not getting enough oxygen. I mean, this is weird. Among other things. What are you trying to pull? Ping now, one other th aspect of this Janus character, I'm going to back this up just a little bit. Because I want you to understand what you're looking at here. Janus, the way he's depicted here, is two-tone. Two-face. That's why he's wearing... What he's wearing something within something else this is the snake splitting out of his skin you knew i was a snake when you let me in and it's the copper snake copper head the copper snake on the pole in the wilderness the israelites do you get it now is it all starting to sink in see how his shirt split right here that's the snake coming out of his skin. My wounds. Explain to me what had happened. He was the one who built it. All right. Self. Now it's a Future. It's all part of the. What Simon told us after. Now we're going to go to another episode. Different episode. We're back to another episode. Okay. And in this episode, it's another time travel theme. And there's a king. That goes down onto a planet and he makes himself the copper king. His, his uh, crown is copper. You'll see it looks like pennies embedded into his crown. And he's a fake. He's two-faced. Okay? And copper will be necessary for the 5G Wiz infrastructure. More copper than has ever been needed before in the history of mankind will be needed for the 5g whiz infrastructure they're called base stations and they contain a lot of copper and there will be many many more by multitudes of these base stations necessary for the infrastructure around the world most u.s coins contain copper Dimes and quarters are 90% copper. 
pennies are 2.5% copper. You would be shocked and amazed at how many people attacked and unsubscribed this channel. Casey, there, there's no coin shortage because of pennies. They're, they don't have any copper in them. Well, that's disinformation. They have some copper. But it's the other coins that are 90% copper that I didn't even think to look at. And when I looked at it, I was like, well, that's it. There's a lot of copper in coins that's just circulating around the country. They need that for the infrastructure. Why raise the alarm and start opening up copper mines all over the U.S.? People would get very suspicious. They'd be like, oh, what are you doing? Why do you need all this copper? Well, it's our own prison, the technocracy. They're building it right now. We're building it. And unless you see things like this and decodes like this and you wake up to what's what you're doing to yourself by helping to build the infrastructure, then we're going to always be slaves until Jesus comes back. That's the fact of the matter. Let's keep watching here. A breeze. A breeze. A breeze. Among other things. What are you trying to pull? King Archon is a prophet. I can read the future. I can read the future. Look at his copper crown. Unbelievable. Everything we've been talking about. It's all part of the prophecy. Hey, boy. What the hell is going on here? The script on these walls is a historical log compiled by an ancient who traveled through time to study the evolution of life on this world. And we know the ancients experimented with time travel. There are references to the time travel device itself. Now, it's described as being inside a small ship. Now, if I'm right, it may still be here. So what's this? Could be the time device. It bears little resemblance to ancient designs we have previously encountered. So they find Janice's time machine, his little time machine ship, and they're like, okay, we're going to use this. I forget why they use it in this episode. Um, I think they're trying to figure out a way to... I can't remember. Good. Well, judging from Mayborn's wall, it must have worked at some point. Uh -huh, I guess uh, congratulations are in order. You made general. You made king. Right. Well, it's uh, not a contest. Now, this guy was born in 1946, same year Trump was born. Now, you guys, this is this is fallen angel intelligence, okay? What you're looking at is the inner workings behind the sorcery of everything that controls your mind. The devil's doing this. He's in control of this reality. The only way out for you is Jesus Christ. They cast this guy as King Copper, born in 46, to basically um channel the trump archetype this episode came out in like 2010 or 2000 i can't remember when this one came out long before trump would be king right let's keep watching did this prophecy mention anything about casualties how many people would die in the fighting does it say anything about the king surviving at all so obviously that's a lincoln because remember lincoln is also a channel of trump so there could be some aspect to this that happens to Trump. It might have already happened with the CV and him going into the hospital. That might have been it. Or there could be something more serious that happens to him. But make no mistake, either it's already happened or something much more serious is going to happen. Because that's part of the timeline in the sorcery. Do you want to roll those dice? Now, of course, that's a reference to Snake Eyes. We decoded that and found all the Trump references in Snake Eyes. When you roll Snake Eyes, it's two dots. Snake Eyes. Actually, there's... Which was filmed in Trump's Atlantic City casino, the Taj Mahal. I'm throwing that out there because if I just say that Trump snake eyes, people are going to say, how can you say that just because of his hands? Well, it's not just about his hands. It's all the other stuff that we showed you about that particular movie. Um, no reference to me specifically. Uh, I just assumed. That yeah. Do you really want to take that chance, Harry? No, no. Just leave that. That stuff over there. And... Now, on the shield, you see a lightning bolt. Now, typically, that lightning bolt wouldn't mean much, except that we've seen that lightning bolt before surrounding Trump, have we not? 
Apparently, Air Force One got struck by lightning. Donald Trump tweeted about it. Departing MCAS Cherry Point, North Carolina for Fayetteville, North Carolina. This is amazing. And they got this shot of Trump coming off Air Force One. More lightning. I pet go to lightning coming out of Donald Trump's name, which also says Psalm 23. You also notice a snake on the opposing shield. Good King Archon is a fraud. Our king is wise. He is a seer. He may be your king, but he's no seer. Now this goes back to the ancient prophecy of the brand seer. We'd covered this in previous videos. If you're interested in that, they're called the Scotland scottish prophecies we did a whole series on that highlander outlander all of this relates back to trump as well he may have been the fulfillment of some scottish prophecy about um scotland coming to america and ruling america okay and when you spell the word seer backwards it spells reese and maybe this is why they named kyle reese kyle reese from terminator we did a whole series on Terminator. We actually, I put it all in one documentary so you don't have to flip through videos. But that documentary is called Terminator. And it's all biblical references. So Kyle Reese was a seer. He was a time traveler. Being a seer is much like being a time traveler. In that prophecy, there was an eye, like an all-seeing eye. And the guy would look through it, and he claimed he couldn't be able to see the future. Weird stuff, right? He may be your king, but he's no seer. He can only interpret what's been written on the pillars of the temple ruins not far from here. I am a pretender. I took so he admits he's two-faced a pretender and as he's doing that you look at the buckles on his the very thing he's wearing and they're six and six advantage of you and Archon the first Archon 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 now Archon Archon can mean either a king or a demon another two-faced mirror Meaning. Now, these archons were also involved in Mithraism, and we exposed that mithra and belief in the seven planets and having to ascend through the seven planets this is where the whole chakra thing comes from ascension through the chakras it's all goes back to mithraism which which emerged just after well it came around before christ but it didn't have all of the beliefs of the christ story till after christ was born and they tried to hijack the christ story and attribute mithraism to christian is to christianity and that's why so many people are confused. They think that Mithraism predated in its form Christianity and the birth of Christ, but it actually did not. It was a different belief system, and then they hijacked Christ's story as their own, is what happened. And uh, Mithra, from Mithra, is where we get the Statue of Liberty, we get Helios, we get Soul, Invictus. Statue of Liberty is S-O-L, soul. And Helios, we see the statue of Helios, which looks just like the Statue of Liberty. I think this is it here. There it is right there. 
Thanks to the subscriber who sent this to me. Okay. That's the inspiration for the Statue of Liberty. Look, the robe, the torch, the head. This is a man. This is Helios, or God. Right here, it says right here. Helios, the sun god. That's what the Statue of Liberty really is. That's what the people really worship. Not the one true god. They worship the false god. Okay. And no politician that I know has ever called this out. So if you got a politician believing in the Statue of Liberty and Lady Liberty and all this, they're still a false prophet. They're still a false politician. Now, let's keep going with this. Thanks to everybody that showed up to the show. We're almost done. So they get the time machine to work, they jump through, they end up in another era. What happened? Well, like I said, they don't even know what a ZPM is. And they arrive in ancient Egypt with Ra. Now watch this. This is where things go off the rails. Because what you're about to see is a little tiny model of Trump Tower on the hieroglyphs. To them, it's like any number of dozens of ritualistic objects they pull up for any number of... See it right there? Occasions. Besides, he... Now, this is going to look familiar because this is also the twin. There are twins of these, Trump Tower and the IBM Tower, um, that look like Superman's insignia, right? But watch. Okay, so I saw when the first time I saw this, I saw this scene. I saw this, but I'm like, okay, I'm not going to put that in my montage until I see it again. Or if I see it again, then I know that they're trying to get us to focus on it. And uh, lo and behold, had I kept watching... Because I had to then go back and re-collect the clip. See, this is why you just got to listen to your gut feeling. And just go with what God's leading you to do. I had to go rewind and collect this clip. Because right after this, they zoom in on this symbol. Watch. But before they do, this is from 13 Ghosts. 2001. We decoded this as well. This is a screenshot from that decode. And on the right is Trump Tower. And Trump Tower fits like a key into this scene in the 13th Ghost, which is all about a time machine full of ghosts operated by human sacrifice. So, and it's all about a key. Remember, Janus holds the key. is the god of gates and keys. So, what is Trump Tower really designed after? It looks to me like a key or a time machine or something like that. Another scene from the 13th ghost on the ceiling is basically Trump Tower again and this weird stair stepping. Okay? So you know and again, completely different movie, different time frame, yet it shows up here and also in Stargate. Wearing the shiny suit. There it is, right there. They want you to see this, right? Now, the shiny shooty, shiny shoot, shiny suit he was wearing is the copper suit. See, copper turns blue when it's oxidized. And it's. <laughs> Now, here we are in another episode, and they're talking about this VC that promised anti-aging, but what it did, this advanced civilization, is they gave humanity this VC, and it ended up causing everyone to be sterilized. 91% reduction in fertility, which of course, 91 reversed is 19. This episode came out 19 years ago. Watch. Order! Order! Ladies. 
vaccination. I just said the word. Depop 2010 is the name of the episode, but it aired on 1301. That's another 13. 19 years before the 313 CV national emergency. And it opens with the pre- a presidential address, the square, and the compass. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Going on again about being obsolete? Oh, think about it, Sam. I mean, look, we've all taken the anti-aging vaccine, the anti-cancer vaccine. My fellow Americans, 10 years ago this very day, a team codenamed SG-1 How long have you been trying? Almost three years. Yes. Came upon an alien race, the Ashen. And now the Ashen have these medical machines that can reverse tissue damage and mend broken bones. I mean, where does that leave me? You can't have children. They said everything was normal. Here, let me show you the scan. Of course, they got to show a T, right? Now, I worked in women's health care for many years before I came to YouTube and decided to dedicate my life to exposing evil. And that is the uterus on the sides of the ovaries. And it does, in fact, look like a T. T could be time. When you enter through the womb, you come in through the time matrix. In fact, the Bible calls the womb the matrix in a a particular scripture, in a verse. So this is really weird, right? So she's obviously sterile. Let's keep going with this. There's no room for interpretation. I'm clearly your ovaries are damaged. Why? I don't know. I want to know why the Ashen doctors looked me in the eye and told me that I was okay. So maybe this has happened to some other people. Do um now Ashen is a play on the words ascend, right? As well as it could be like Archon. They're all like kind of the same. Root General words. search, human reproductive statistics. Oh, well, that can't be right. Well, if I'm reading this properly. The worldwide birth rate has dropped almost 91% of 91% of 91% of 91% of 91% in the last two years. It's supposed to be a third of that. Chin insisted on it. Oh my god. Honey, they see further ahead than we do. They knew that if we didn't limit growth, we wouldn't. Hey, is that what you call this? Well, obviously, this is not what we agreed to. I can't believe this. The population was unsustainable. Without drastic measures, the Shin didn't think we were worth investing in. What? Well, that's what it says right here. These are the Ashen numbers. Yeah, but we would know. It's happening everywhere the anti-aging vaccine has gone. And with that introduction, I was able to forge the greatest alliance this country, indeed, this world, has ever known. Guys, I think it would be public knowledge if something this catastrophic was happening to the entire population. Willing to share their science and technology? Friendly. Smarter than we are. Now, we've seen... This theme persists on many, many decodes on different TV series. Childhoods and a worldwide VC to cure diseases that ends up causing the end of humanity. Depopulation, sterilization. We saw this repeated also in the TV series Utopia. Same exact theme where a biological VC called Janus was released to the world to sterilize them. How many more times do we have to see what's happening? How many more times? Now, as far as I know, well, let's just keep going with this. Would it? I mean, the Ashen can convert planets into stars. You don't think they could control the media if they wanted to? It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years. Why now? Uh, assuming the Ashen can keep something this big a secret. We were completely taken in. This way they didn't have to fire a shot. You knew I was a snake when you took me in. Ten years ago, from the setting of this episode, which is called 2010. It aired in 2001, but it's set in 2010. They talk about control of the media. And if they really wanted to do it, 
How could they do this right in plain sight? It's because exactly what we're trying to tell you right now. We're showing you what they're trying to do, but not enough people are awake to it. Too many people want to attack other people and attack channels and call this just a theory when they're showing you what they're going to do in plain sight. It's slow, methodical, painless. A couple of days ago, I found out that I can't ever have children. According to the Ashen doctors, I was fine, but not according to Dr. Fraser. We got into the Ashen computer network. They keep statistics on everything. Okay, then why provide a vaccine that almost doubles the human lifespan? That doesn't make any sense. Unless that's the mechanism they use to sterilize the population. In the last couple of years, without our even knowing it, they have managed to sterilize over 90% of the world's population. And they're certainly patient enough. All they have to do is wait. And within 200 years, there will be very few, if any, humans remaining. I mean, the other 10% are probably just a matter of time. The yeah, Ashen will have this world unto themselves. Well, we have to do something. I, I, I don't know. I mean, tell somebody. A number of years ago, a freak accident sent us back to 1969. We know that by dialing coordinates that are precisely on the opposite side of the sun at the exact moment of a solar flare, it creates a time distortion. It causes the wormhole to turn back towards Earth on itself. Now, theoretically, we could send ourselves a message. Look right here. My calculations are correct. There should be a flare in about five seconds. That's it. Now what we need is for the computer to predict another flare. We have a flare prediction 57 minutes from now. So the CRONA enables the portal to open. Kind of like what's happening now. Whatever it is the CRONA is, it's through our obedience to it it's opening the bottomless pit or some kind of portal some kind of time portal some some type it's going to allow all these things through a gate do you start to see what's happening now 57 minutes from now she said 57 minutes from now that's not a random number what you're looking at is the facade of a very famous tower that came down. There are 19 tridents on the face of these towers, or were, and there are three prongs on each trident. That's 57, and this event happened 19 years ago. Fifty-seven minutes from now. Fifty-seven. Trump lives on 57th Street. He is the 5G Wiz president. 5 and 7 is 5 and G. 7 minutes from now. Is that enough time? It'll have to do. Melon. Mullum. Mullum. I'm sorry. Now this character, this is the Ashen leader. The, the sneaky, sneaky guy who ended up trying to sterilize the entire human race and take over planet Earth. This is what the fallen angels want to do. And his name is Malum, which is a play on the words Molech and Gollum. Gollum is like something that's dead, that's reanimated, which is the blood, the serpent bloodline. This is what they do. They make Gollums out of ancient black goo DNA from the pharaohs, and they recreate these empty vessels that can then be possessed by demons and rule as presidents and heads of state. This is why these people are so evil. So, he is a Molech Gollum. Malum. Let's keep watching. Melon. Malum. Malum. Now, theoretically, we could send ourselves a message. They send themselves a message not to ever go back to this planet where they met the Ashen who would try to take out the human race. What is it? You tell me. Under no circumstances go to P4C 970 Colonel Jack O'Neill.
wonder why he sent it. I wonder when. So then in another episode, they end up going to the planet anyway. And here's what ties it all in together. And then once we're done with this, the show will be over. Now this is important to, this is important, okay? These numbers mean everything. When this thing aired, it aired 19 years ago, 11 days before the Blind 11 anniversary, which had 111 days left in the year. Is an example of a bio weapon we can make available to you. The Ashen vaccine had a side effect. The Ashen vaccine had a side effect. Had a side effect. Had a side effect. Oh, some big black letters. Ashen vaccine causes something. I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's a good thing. Would you read this aloud for me? I couldn't quite translate it. Of course. Sterility. These pictures appear to be much like those we saw of people celebrating. Uh, I don't think they're celebrating. I think they're rioting. I think they're rioting. I think they're rioting. So if, obviously there's rioting going on. Why was there rioting in the episode? It's because they realized they were being sterilized. Now, Teal'c is the black guy you saw. He's got a copper thing on his forehead and his name is Teal which means teal is blue, which is what copper turns into when it oxidizes. He has a serpent in his chest called a symbiote. And he is descended from the ancient Ra. A living radioactive genetic material that may be designed to attack and destroy only the specific DNA of your enemy. Here's what we know. Around 200 years ago, the Volians were a thriving urban civilization, approximating Turn of the century North America in terms of technology. We have a number of efficient delivery systems. <clears throat> what happened to them? Well, all we know is that there was a, a flu pandemic, similar to the one on Earth in 1918 that killed over 20 million people. Now that is when the issue... And that's a direct reference to what we're dealing with right now. Because this is what they keep referring to, 1918, the flu pa spamdemic, right? Shen came. So I'm the only one that has a bad feeling about this. Here's something. The headline says something about a pandemic, some sort of... I can't translate that, maybe fever. They befriended the Volians, offered them a, a vaccine for their epidemic, and saved their world. Now, by all accounts, the Ashen were heroes to the Volians, and their friendship lasted for years. They provided a... can't translate that word either, but it appears to have been some sort of vaccine. And the Volian people were immensely grateful. Problem, reaction, solution. They created the disease and they created the VC to cure it. Out of, because people gave into fear. But then something happened. What? I don't know. What's the future really like, Colonel? You can tell me. As far as I know, it hasn't happened yet. But it has for you. Now, that guy you saw ends up, his name is Kinsey. And he ends up becoming the president, as you saw. Kinsey may, may be a play on the word Kennedy. Uh, this word loosely translates as, as medicine vaccine drug, followed by from the newcomers. Hell, you've been back in time, forward in time. You've seen it all. I just wonder how things turn out. Followed by causes, followed by some word I can't translate. Sterility. Now, this was the latest issue of the paper we could find, which most likely indicates the paper shut down or was shut down the very next day. Now, somebody figured out that these letters it could be decoded by looking at the next letter in the alphabet or the previous letter. I can't remember. But like F, uh, it would be, this could either be an E, 
or a G instead of an F. It's one letter off. So someone translated this and it's basically exactly what he said it was. So. Very next day. Vaccine causes what? Sterility. Because in the span of 200 years, the Voyans went from an urban civilization of millions to an agrarian civilization of thousands after they were saved by the Ashen. And I wonder how far you'd go to stop me from becoming president of the United States. General, you have to speak to the president. I just tried. He's being briefed by the ambassador. It won't take my call. It won't take my call. It won't take my call. You knew what you were planning, Mom, and this just confirms it. Vaccine causes sterility. That was the headline. You wiped out most of the Volian population and turned their entire world into farmland. General, you have to speak to the president. And do the same to Earth. When they knew we were onto them, they launched a bioweapon. Colonel! I had to warn you, I couldn't wait for the ambassador. I'm sorry, sir. General, you have to speak to the president. So that's it. Hopefully that clarified things for most of you who are still lost on some of these montages i do promise you that the more you watch the channel and stay up to date and current on on the videos you won't feel so lost but i do try to extrapolate on these montages like i did today with these live shows so if you just show up every day in the morning on the weekdays at the same exact time that's what we'll be doing spending more time on these topics oh um, my gosh how long we've we been going it feels like that was a really packed show was it not probably could have broke that up into two shows but uh i feel like it went pretty well so let's go back here and see how long we've been live so um wow an hour and a half all right um maybe we could do a little q a since it's already a long show You are what you fear. Fear, what fear leads to is compliance. Okay? God doesn't want you living in fear. You're supposed to cast all your burdens on his son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And you shouldn't be living in fear about what happens to your life. Because you have eternity waiting on the other side. There's no reason to fear all the things that, th that this world wants you to fear. All the fear they're pumping into you. I look around and I see people, you know, distancing and doing all these things out of fear. Jesus wasn't a distancer. Everything that's happening right now is Antichrist. It has nothing to do with what Jesus taught. But for some reason, people are all walking, sleepwalking, thinking that all this is necessary. Thinking that Trump has our best interests at heart. He simply does not. No leader does. They're billionaires. They have nothing in common with us at all how they convince us that they do that is pretty crazy that's crazy so question how are you casey i'm doing okay you know i feel like i'm on autopilot most days you know i I'm, I have tasks to do. God has put me on tasks. This is the way, the best way I could describe it. And I can't put it down, even if I wanted to. Because this is what he wants me doing right now. To wake people up. To snap them out of their sleep. Showing them the deepest details of how the devil is tricking them. This is what we do here. All right. Someone's been seeing those stairs. Jerry says, I've been seeing those stairs in Egypt. Yeah, what, are, what could those little stair steps mean that are in Trump Tower and in the hieroglyphics? Well, maybe it has something to do with ascension, you know, like the Ashen. Marcia says, read your Bible. Absolutely. There are many channels on YouTube that all they do is read scripture. I encourage that, Marcia. You shouldn't be spending all your time on this channel. It's, a, it's called balance. But you also need to see what the enemy's up to, especially if you watch TV. Or if you watch commercials. Or if you have a cell phone. And all the stuff is coming in through those devices. Seemingly innocent shows, favorite actors, all of it's sorcery. So don't you want to know what it's all about, Marsha? 
I would, unless you want to stay asleep and just see all that stuff and just be deceived. All right, that's a good question. Okay, find the cornerstone of Trump Tower. That's a really good thing to do. Um, we do have a show coming up where I found this weird alignment of two of Trump's building and a lot of copper top buildings in lower Manhattan. So I, we have that show scheduled later in the week. And there's something about these copper top buildings. So I did like a whole, I have a whole show for that in lower Manhattan. I believe that it's somehow maybe channeling some kind of energy. And you got Brookhaven there on Long Island. And just a few miles away on Long Island, you have Tesla's tower or former tower. And there's something weird going on with this copper. We're going to look at copper collisions. These experiments that they did at Brookhaven. We're going to bust this thing wide open, you guys. There's a lot more to this than meets the eye. I recommend if you feel like you're focusing too much time here on this stuff, Marsha, that you go to the other channels. You don't have to be here. No one's forcing you to be here. So you can go do that if you want. But it's really nefarious when people come on the channel and try to redirect people off of this channel. That's something something very evil about that. When I opened the show with telling you that other channels are places that you can be to gather other information, that I'm just part of the whole thing, the body of Christ. Everyone has a gift. So that's something you need to look inside of yourself to find out why you're feeling that way. Is it that you're seeking attention? Duracell. Yeah, we're also going to do a decode on Duracell, the copper top battery. Found this bizarre commercial about child safety and tracking. This is a whole nother show we're going to do. Child tracking. And right there in the commercial is the boy with the red balloon. We told you what the red balloon represented. Helios. They're mocking you. Brick House Security. We're going to decode and break down this commercial. I mean, this is sick stuff, you guys. So, the point of all this is to understand that don't be married to this world. This world is not where you should be placing your allegiance. All of the things that they tell you that are important are not important. Careers and getting a lot of money, mortgages, those aren't what's important in this life. And Jesus tells you that. Don't keep your eyes fixed on this world. Keep your eyes fixed on heaven. That's the whole moral of this. Nothing of any influence in this world is good. It's just not. Even something that you think is completely great and safe, like tracking your child to make sure they don't get lost, as I just demonstrated. So, we're going to end the show there. I appreciate everyone coming out, even you, Marsha. I hope that you get an attitude adjustment and stop trolling us. And just, uh, you know, if you're not enjoying the whole process here, you can go and listen to someone who's talking about the Bible all the time. If that's what you need, if that's the food you need, go for it. Okay? I'm not trying to keep you here. This, is, this channel is for people that are stuck in the matrix who don't even know that they're being tricked and deceived. And they need to see stuff like this to make that happen. I love each and every one of you. Take care and be safe, you guys. Have a great day.